Hello everyone, be right there. Just need to put some milk in the in the creamer here. like a <clears throat> like an obstacle course in here whenever I set up for tea time. All right. Let's see who is in the chat. Um, all right. We have Fallon Wills. Hello. Hello Mike. Hello to Ty um, Tyler. Hey Mark, how's it going? Yes, the, the Oregon weather is definitely cooler today. Um, it, it, yeah, I didn't do the, the Sunday stream because it was just, it was so hot. And I don't have air conditioning. Um, you know, for those who don't know about the state of Oregon that I live in, it's up north. It's northern United States. So, um, it it's usually cold weather here it's either mildly warm in summer or very very cold in winter where it actually snows and so most of the buildings in oregon are designed so they retain heat for those cold uh those cold days which again takes up most of the year so my walls my exterior walls are about a foot thick now to put that in perspective when I lived in Southern California where the weather was always sunny and warm our walls were half that thick so the walls here are twice as thick to retain heat so during the very short summers we usually get mild summers not very warm at all um, but when we do get a heat wave which is really random it just we all suffer and not many Oregonians have air conditioners because you know ever since you know this state was founded people haven't really needed air conditioning um, but as you know as the weather has been changing every year it's been getting warmer and warmer during the summer so people are starting to buy air conditioners I don't have one yet I used to I don't have the money to buy one I'd have to, I don't have a window to put it in. I'd have to buy like a standing unit that sits right here next to the window or right next to the sliding glass door. That's what this is, is a sliding glass door. So um, yeah, it was really, it was really unbearable. It was so bad. I, I didn't cook any food. I was actually going hungry for two days straight because it was so hot. I didn't want to like prepare any food. I didn't have stuff to make salad. So because I didn't, I didn't plan properly for the heat, so I didn't buy stuff to make cold food. So, yeah, I basically didn't eat for two days. <laughs> and it was so hot, I just, I could not drink tea. So I didn't do a tea time on Sunday. All right, so, oh, I knew I was missing something. I need my plastic container for dumping out the water. Alrighty. So I have pre warmed the vessels. I'm just going to add some boiling water. That's yeah, about good. Okay, so I'll let that pre-warm a little bit so I don't shock the uh, china and crack it. All right, so... I'm 
Interesting. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read out loud everyone's comments because I've been getting a lot more people on my channel and uh, and frankly, some of these comments they're they're not necessary for me to respond to. So um, it's just casual conversation. So I'm reading them, but um, I may not respond to every single one. Um, hello, Wyatt. Hello, Kinarder. Hello, History with Swag. Hey, Jeffrey. Air says, almost 27k subscribers. Yeah, I'm getting close to 27,000. It's pretty cool, actually. Uh, the channel's been growing a lot recently, especially with the, the videos that I've put out about the caboose and then uh, about uh, the HMT Lancastria. So that was exactly the point, was I, I am trying to spread out with more different types of videos. Um, if I always just focused on ocean liners, the, the channel wouldn't really grow that much. Because I have noticed that when I focus too much on ocean liners, people get bored. So I think people are kind of wanting something a little bit more. They're just, uh, they're just not sure exactly what they want me to do besides ocean liners. But it seems that people are really enjoying that stuff, but, uh... Tyler, yeah, yeah, it's, it, it gets pretty hot. Uh, Fallon, um... You know, if Titanic never sank, it probably would have continued on with a normal service life until the war, and probably during the war it would have been torpedoed or, or sunk in, you know, in some way. Even if it survived the war like the Olympic did, it probably would have eventually been scrapped by 1935. So, um, if Titanic had never sank, no one would really even know much about it. it there wouldn't be too much... Uh, there wouldn't be too much attention to it. I think I think the one reason why Titanic is just so well known is because it sank, honestly. That's one of the reasons why like Queen Mary, Armist Queen Mary was really really famous when she was in service. Everybody around the world knew the RMS Queen Mary. Um but but uh you know, the funny thing about that is as soon as she was retired from service, her popularity just started to kind of softly decline because she became less famous, you know? Um, other ships became more famous than her, like Titanic. And so, honestly, one of the reasons why Queen Mary isn't as famous as Titanic today, even though she's had a much more storied history than Titanic ever did, is simply because Queen Mary never sank. So, yeah. Uh, Mark says, live in Queensland, Alex, which is like your Florida. I don't have air conditioning either, but I do live on the ocean, so the breezes suffice. I do have ceiling fans, though, which may not be so popular in the USA. Um, no, yeah, we, we, a lot of people have ceiling fans in the United States, um, but a lot of people have stopped buying them. Because, uh, you know, heat rises, so when you have a ceiling fan, it just blows the heat back down. <laughs> so I think a lot of people have, have slowly stopped buying them, but they were really popular, especially when I was a kid. I, I feel like everybody's house, every time I went into, into there, there was a ceiling fan, you know? Um, even my last apartment in California had a ceiling fan in the dining room. Um... Kelly says, from a scale from 1 to 10, how do you rate the Queen Mary? A 10, I would have to say. She's my favorite ship, so I would have to rate it high. Hello, Mike. Oliver says, hey, guys, just joined. What did I miss? Not much. We're just preheating the vessels for tea. Uh, Jeffrey says, are you interested in old movies, Hollywood history at all? Unfortunately, not really. I, I don't have an interest in that. Um, 
Okay, so time for me to dump out some of this. Go ahead and move this back. Fill this with the boiling water. It's hard for me to, to see where the water is in that. I'm gonna let that sit for just a minute or two to kind of cool down a little bit. Um, because today is going to be Earl Grey tea, and the Earl Grey uh, is a little bit more sensitive to heat. It'll when it when you brew it, it brews a bit more bitter uh, with with uh, water that's too hot. Um, Dangerous Brian says, also, if Titanic never sank, then ocean travel safety probably would not be as standard as it is today. Safety regulations may never have gotten updated. I don't think that's true. I think it. I think eventually it would have, because Titanic wasn't the only ship that ever sank by accident. There have been a lot of ships that have sank by accident. Um, and then there are ships that have been sank on purpose. And, you know... So I think eventually uh, there would have been regulations that fixed that. I mean, look at, you know, Costa Concordia, you know, that that was negligence. But nevertheless, it was an accident. It's not like somebody literally tried to ram it into the rocks. They were just being stupid. But um, but there would have been a lot more Costa Concordias in the past, eventually, at one point. And so... You know, I think eventually our technology, you know, we would have upgraded all the safety features even more. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I think eventually it would have. Uh, history with swag. Yeah, I have. Gray Starline says, Alex just recently bought an RMS Queen Mary model, and now I'm looking for a RMS Queen Elizabeth model to go with the RMS Queen Mary. Oh, okay. Did you buy a pre-made model or a model kit? Oliver, uh, I don't plan to cover warships. I'm not much of a military fanatic, uh, so I don't see myself covering warships. Uh, I like the golden age of travel. That's usually what I really like. So s steam and all that, but passenger travel. So I'll be focusing more on that kind of stuff. I think, I mean, I also like 1800s freight trains, you know, steam freight trains. So those are a few things I might cover. Um, you know, there's there's a, a few logging railroads up here in the Pacific Northwest that I'll eventually cover in my videos. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the extent of it. Supernova. Well, I mean, I was summing it up in just a few words, but I mean, it's not, I, again, it's not like they intended to crash the ship. They were being very negligent and, you know, without taking an hour to explain the whole situation, that's kind of what it boils down to is just stupidity and negligence, you know, and that lack of responsibility is what led to a lot of people dying, you know, and a lot of other people at risk of death. And so, you know, I, yeah, I don't want to linger on the subject for so long, but, you know, that's, that's what it boils down to. Let's see. All right, here we go. Oh, jeez. Four sixteen, so do four twenty ish. All right, now the tea is brewing. Ozzy didn't burn my fingers yet because I haven't, I haven't even brewed the tea yet. Uh. 
Yeah, Fallon, I, I don't I don't I don't wanna go into what ifs like that. I feel like it would be rude to talk about, you know, such a tragedy and just be like, what if this, what if that happened to it? What if this happened? I don't like doing that. I'm not like most YouTubers that way. I, I try to respect, you know, a tragedy. Uh, Gray Starline says, I bought a pre-made model. Awesome. Is it one of those um, 3D printed ones that you can get on Amazon? So a few more minutes on that tea. So today I didn't have the ingredients to make a cucumber sandwich or a egg salad sandwich. So what I did was another type of British snack. It's not a traditional snack, but it's uh, peanut butter and banana. So the from what I understand, the Brits don't eat peanut butter and jelly the way that we Americans would. So I made peanut butter and banana, which is actually a, a very good snack to have. Uh, Ozzy, the weather here is is mild. It's it's slightly warm, not not terrible but slightly warm um we just came off of a heat wave this past weekend which is why i didn't do a, a tea time on sunday the heat was so bad i just couldn't do it um but uh but yeah otherwise today the weather is is relatively mild i mean it says 70 degrees fahrenheit on my phone but i've been outside and it feels warmer than that it feels like 75 you know um so it's not bad um for the Pacific Northwest, it's a sli it's you know slightly warm than the weather we've been having. I mean, we've had winter weather all the way through the beginning of this month. To be totally honest, even at the beginning of this month, we were having heavy cold rain and you know rainy, stormy, cold weather. Um, so can you imagine that? Like all the way till the beginning of this month. That is the longest, like, wintry weather I've ever experienced in my life. Usually the wintry weather... In Southern California, you get winter weather for, like, a month. And then it's back to, like, sunny and warm. At that, And that was before the major drought. <laughs> um, but, yeah, up here it was, it, it was weird. Like, we just had unusually wet weather. But that led to an excess of snow in our mountains. And so right now our rivers are higher than usual and they're very cold, very, very cold. So. Fun edit says, did you know cruise ships can stay afloat even if they're upside down? I think for various reasons they can. I don't think, I mean, off the top of my head, I don't know that they're designed to permanently stay afloat even if they're upside down. I think that they stay afloat because there's air pockets inside. Um, but eventually those air pockets will leak. Uh, so if, if a cruise ship is capsized for a long period of time, it, I believe it will eventually sink. Supernova, did I insult you or something? Did I say something that made you really angry? Because your comments sound kind of abrasive. Ozzy says, did you know Elvis Presley loved peanut butter and banana sandwiches? Actually, that's a fun fact I forgot, but yeah, that was, that's something I, yeah, pretty cool. 
Um, yeah, you know what's really weird was this weekend was a really strange weekend. Like, I have gotten way more negative comments on my channel this past weekend than I've ever had in the history of my channel. Uh, uh, yeah, Supernova 3000, I don't know what you're talking about. Keep in mind, I do speak to thousands of people all the time, and I can't remember everybody all at the same time. So... Uh, yeah. But yeah, it was a really strange weekend. Just a lot of negativity over the weekend. I, I was like joking to my friends. I was like, is there like a Prozac shortage or something? Like, it is unbelievable. <laughs> and it was like stuff for no reason, too. I mean, there was some legitimate stuff, but... Yeah... I'm getting mixed messages, Supernova. I, um... You know, I'm a reasonable person. If there's something I did wrong that, you know, and you want to talk about it, and I can help address it and stuff, I'm not an unreasonable person. Like, I do block people from the channel and stuff like that, but you'd have to do something really, really bad for me to do that. Um, but, yeah, I don't, um, you know, I like to work things out with people whenever I can. Um, yeah. Oh, thank you, Pookie. Oh, darn it. It's been brewing for too long. You know, I think ultimately what it is, is lots of people in this world, they're experiencing a lot of tragedy, a lot of loss. You know, there's things happening in the world that people don't agree with. People are frustrated. I think that's what's going on, is that everybody in this world is right now really frustrated uh, with everything. I know I am. Um, so, what I do on my channel, I try to do it, you know, I try to make my channel a place where people can go to kind of get away from that for a little while and just, you know, enjoy listening and talking about subjects they like uh, when it comes to what pertains to the channel. Um, yeah, I burn my fingers on every everything. Um, where is, oh yeah, here's the sugar. Yeah. I think that, you know, like this weekend, like I was saying, like there was just a lot of negativity on the channel. I think that people assume I'm some kind of robot that, you know, that, that their, that their lives are so much worse than mine and I can just take whatever they throw at me. I think that's what it is. I think that <clears throat> because, you know, all my life I've had to deal with the fact that some people, um, you know, think of me as like a punching bag or something that they can just, you know, say whatever, especially on the internet, you know. Like I said, this weekend was just crazy. Like some people you could tell that what they were commenting about was not what was bothering them. 
I think that there were like other things and they were just kind of like taking it out on me. And some people were actually kind of nice afterwards. They were like, oh, you know, I didn't, I didn't mean that. I'm just, you know, talking. I'm like, oh, that's fine. I understand, you know, but, but yeah. Um, Supernova. Well, thank you. I mean, I, you're not in trouble. I just didn't understand because, because uh, you were, you were saying to me, can you tell me what I said that you implied it's racist or something? I don't know if that was directed at me, but I don't re recall ever calling you racist. But then again, I mean, I don't know. It's, there's thousands of people. Um, and then you said, so basically you're saying that there's no such thing as global warming. Like, I don't know. I just, I felt like that was kind of targeted at me. So I didn't really know what to say to that. Um... Let's see. Chillin says, no Prozac shortage, just a surplus of electrons. Was there a solar flare? I think somebody was talking about that the other day, that that there was like a solar flare this past weekend. Maybe that's why I had all these weird comments on my channel over the weekend. Um... Thanks, Tyler. Uh, Gray Starline says, Did you know that Carnival is retiring the Carnival Ecstasy and Carnival Sensation? No, I didn't know that. But then again, at the same time, I, I haven't really been ke keeping up with um, cruise lines. Uh, more of a steamship person. Mark says, Alex, your channel is a place of interest and escape for me to indulge in and share ocean liner info with like-minded folk i love it your tease i look forward to a lot as i work home as i work from home great job thank you yeah i try to make this a, a positive place um i know for one thing i have a lot of interests trains cooking ocean liners disneyland you know i have so many random interests all over and whenever i try to get in one there's a lot of pushback from the established fans. Their their thing is always like, you don't know enough, don't talk, and you know, and that kind of thing. And I got a lot of that this weekend as well. Um, you know, and it reminded me so much of when I opened, when me and my, my business partner opened our first cafe he wanted to do something that was like um he wanted to do something that 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 was what's called a third wave coffee shop so um for those that don't know a third wave coffee shop is basically like the really fancy coffee shops the ones that everybody drinks coffee that's from specific origins on the planet and that kind of thing and some people I, I mean i'll speak from my own experience i've been to some third wave coffee shops and they're pretty snooty, you know? You ask for, you know, <laughs> I've, I've seen people order a caramel latte from these coffee shops and they look at the customer like, who are you and go back to Starbucks kind of look. And my business partner and I, we didn't like how people were being treated because some people really wanna get into the third wave coffee. They really want to try new things. And when you get treated like, you know, oh, you don't belong here. You know, it, it's just it, it, it's just a horrible way to treat customers. So it's so we started our business back then as a way to introduce new people to third wave coffee and to be the opposite of snooty, but to like show them like, hey, this is why we're enthusiastic about this coffee. Or, you know, I was the chef, so I did pastries and stuff. I did stuff from like all over the world. I even did. I used to, I used to make um, uh, English scones with clotted cream, and there was a lot of Americans that were not used to it, but some of them really were digging it. You know, they liked it. Um, so yeah, you know, we weren't reinventing the wheel or anything. We were just making stuff more accessible to people who are not used to that kind of thing. So go, you know, linking this back with uh, with the channel. 
Oh, yummy. So linking this back with the channel, you know, I wanted to share my interests with people in a way that I didn't try to make them feel dumb for not knowing something because I'm always in that boat. I'm always learning about something new and people try to make me feel dumb for it. So that's what this channel is about, is, is trying to share interests. You know, I'm not perfect. Sometimes I'm wrong. Sometimes in my videos I make mistakes. I know my, my Caboose video has been a, like, and it was a video I posted maybe two weeks ago. It's been a subject of uh, embarrassment for me because there were things I did wrong on that video. I said incorrect things, you know, and and I forgot to mention certain things. And I and afterwards, after I published the video, I realized I'm like, I could have done so much better on that video. But you know, my friend was trying to tell me, he goes, well, you know, that's why you eventually make another one and you do it better, you know? And he's like, don't, you know, beat yourself up for not being perfect. He goes, you know, nobody's perfect. And you know, he, he thought the video was good. He goes, it was fun, it was entertaining. That's what you do. And I thought, you know, he's right. It's fun, it's entertaining and I was this close to deleting the video just because I was so embarrassed by it, but, but I didn't. I kept it because it was still fun. And there's a lot of people who want to see train content and then there's not enough of it for them. So having one more video and one more video is always good. But but yeah, so... Um, but yeah, but that, that very same thing, all the... The issues with the Caboose video is part of, like, the negativity I was getting all weekend, uh, just from people. And all you can really do is just shake your head and try to move on, you know? You can... What I'll do in the future is I'll, I'll do a better job, you know? So, that's how, that's how I try to think of things. So... Uh, let me go back to see what people are commenting. Pookie says, I remember you and I had a bit of a disagreement a few months ago. We talked about it here and... Right, we talked about it and here we are. I watch every single one of your videos. I show as much love as possible to you and your channel. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I I know, like, I I can let things go, you know? And this goes for everybody watching, you know? Sometimes we have disagreements, you know? Sometimes we... We don't see eye to eye or or we misunderstand things, you know, but people you'll one thing you'll find about me is I'm always willing to just let it roll off my back and and try to resolve the situation and get things back to normal. I wish I could do that for all the people who who comment negatively on my channel. I have to remind myself that there's some people who legitimate who legitimately have concerns and then there's trolls. And I have to remember that trolls just want to be trolls. But there's some people who have legitimate concerns and they have a problem with me. And it's those people I hope I can, you know, I can resolve the issues and make things right. You know, so, uh, you know, because I do, I really do care that people watch my channel. It's not, for me, it's not just about views and clicks and monetization. I actually really do consider a lot of my viewers as like an extended, you know, friendship with people I don't really know, you know, um, because I, you know, I grew up having all these interests and I couldn't really talk to anybody about it. I couldn't be like, oh, let's talk about, you know, ships. Let's talk about trains. Let's talk about Disneyland. Like I had to just <laughs> be on my own, you know? So it's, so this channel actually has been a really big blessing in that sense. And I, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the support I get on my channel. I mean, you know, even right now, I'm director of public relations for QMI Restore the Queen, you know? Like, I'm part of a team of people who will have their hands in helping to, you know, save and restore a historic ocean liner, you know? Like, that's a big deal for me. I've always wanted to do something in my life where I feel like I was making a lasting difference. You know, when I... When I first got my first job at Disneyland, that was something I thought I'd be doing. I thought, I thought, you know, I'll be working for this company. I'll be making people happy. This is something that will last a lifetime. And in a way, it's true. But when I finally left the company, I realized that everything I had done was not memorable. No one was going to remember it. And so, um, so yeah, 
I, I, you know, I've always wanted to do something that, that I'll be remembered for at least, you know. Let's try these. Uh, chilling. The, the sandwiches today are peanut butter and banana. So I was saying earlier that, you know, in the United States, everybody knows peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. But because I try to stick to a British theme here, I looked to see what they eat. <laughs> Do they eat peanut butter and jelly in Britain? Not really. They'll eat peanut butter and jelly and bananas. Or not peanut butter and bananas, I'm sorry. And I thought, oh, I've had that before. It's, as someone else mentioned, it was Elvis Presley's favorite uh, snack sandwich, you know. So, I had peanut butters, I had fresh... I had peanut butter, I had fresh bananas. So I thought, I'll make it. Um, Swag says... Have I seen the Carnival cruise ships that is sitting next to the Queen Mary? Um, when I was there in 2020, there was a different Carnival ship there. And from what people tell me, the one that was there in 2020 has since been scrapped. The one that's there now, I've never been up to it, never seen it with my own eyes. So... Mark says, well, I've never heard of third wave coffee. Australia is a huge coffee nation, too. I must Google it. When I'm in, in, state, when I'm in the States, I love diner percolated coffee, which is no longer available in shops here. Percolated coffee, yeah. That's something that you can't find much uh, around the U.S. Uh, either. Because um, even diners today, they have... Um, oh, what do, what do they call it? Um... It's just, we call it drip coffee because it, you know, the, the the hot water goes into a basket, the basket drips into a pot. And, uh, but the percolated coffee, yeah, that, I've never seen any place that has that. But when I was a kid, uh, my grandmother used to make coffee in a percolator. And um, I was always fascinated watching it just boil and bubble, but... Um, uh, but yeah, third wave coffee is really good because I I want to say third wave, if, if you're a person who likes, uh, you know, like some people are not afraid to say, I like, you know, just strong, muddy coffee. Okay, that's fine. That's your, that's your thing. But it's always fun to try something new as well. Um, and so uh, with third wave coffee, oh, like I'll give you a, an example. My favorite... Uh, coffee to have at a, at a third wave shop um, is what we call single origin coffee. So it means that instead of it being a blend of beans from different areas of the world, it's like a single bean from a certain farm. <laughs> and so, um, so one of my favorites is to get Ethiopian coffees. So I've had Ethiopian Limu, Ethiopian Yurgachev, and a few others and such. And it's usually from specific regions of Ethiopia or specific farms in, Eth in Ethiopia. And uh, what's great about these is that their flavors can vary. So the Yurgachev, if I'm remembering correctly, because it's been a couple of years, the Yurgachev, I think, has flavor notes of blueberry. So when you're drinking it, it tastes like coffee, but it's almost like if bl if a blueberry produced coffee <laughs> and uh and then i think limu i think is the if i'm remembering correctly again off the top of my head i think the limu is the one that's citrusy and or maybe i have it mixed matched anyway but one of them is is the citrusy one so it's almost as if if like an orange produced coffee <laughs> 
So that's what's kind of cool is you can get these various flavor notes. There's some coffees, you know, from South America, like certain regions that their coffees taste like chocolate or they taste like a hazelnut or something like it's amazing. And you can get these very specific flavors out of coffee and you can get coffees that, you know, when you brew them, they're bitter or you brew them, they're sweet. And these are, these coffees are usually so good. You wouldn't want to put cream and sugar in them. They're so good by themselves. It's like a tea, but it's coffee. So it's actually kind of cool. And it's, it's a little, you know, for people that, for, if you're new to that, then it's something you might like as a treat. Maybe not something you'd want to have every day, but something that's kind of good as a treat. And so I've always been very proud of that that business. Um, you know, my my former business partner still operates it, and uh, it's out in um, in uh, San Juan Capistrano in uh, uh, Orange County, California. So. You know, he still operates that there, um, and he just does the coffee portion of the business there. But yeah, it's really good, and, and for people who try it, they usually really like it and stuff, so yeah. <clears throat> Tyler says, was watching Old General Hospital, and one character gave two lessons in retail. Treat everyone like your mother, and two... They're all thieves. Oh my gosh. Uh, Andreas. Yes, eventually I'll do Conta de Savoia, but I can't promise when because I've got a whole lineup of videos to do. Like a year's worth of videos lined up. Um, Oliver says, I'm part Swedish and I can confirm that Swedish pastries are just the best. <laughs> uh, let's see. Supernova says, you're just entertaining, entertaining, but I still love you. Thanks. Uh, Supernova says, do they know you still play with toy trains? You know, I like to think that it's okay to indulge in things that make you happy. You know, it's like everybody is so stressed out in their life and there's so much pressure to be mature and you can be mature and still have you know a really great hobby you know so i have heard people make fun of my toy trains and you know it just makes me think you know those people they they are trapped they feel like they can't do something that they enjoy unless other people agree with it or think it's you know mature or whatever so you know frankly yeah, it makes me happy. I've spent enough of my life trying to satisfy other people. I am now going to live my life in a way that makes me happy. So, um, and I know there's some people who've commented on my channel. They're just like, oh, get a real job. It's like, I have. You know, I've, I've done some really, really difficult jobs in my life. I've worked for a long time, you know, and I still work. Right now, my my current job is actually a voluntary job, but it's still a difficult job nonetheless. You know, it's and I I I'm tired of watching people who are suffering in their lives and never get to have any fun. And I told myself, I'm like, I'm not gonna live that way anymore. You know, I had developed schizophrenia when I was younger. I still have schizophrenia. And part of the reason why it developed so severely at the time was because of all the stress I was under. And, you know, eventually my psychiatrist said, look, one of the ways you're going to be able to get out of this, well, not get out of it, but to make it better is to, you know, is to reduce the amount of stress you have. And I'm sitting here in front of a camera talking to all of you right now, you know, as sharp as can be. Um simply because I've tried to cut stress out of my life and instead move my life in a direction that, you know, I feel like will make me happier. So I'm always supportive of people who, 
you know, they they feel like their their family wants something of them, uh, but they want something more. And so I'm always supportive of people who want to do that. You know, I've had family who have felt that way, and I told them I said, look, don't don't you know worry about what the family thinks. Do what makes you happy. You know, I've worried enough about what my family thinks of me, and in the end, they're proud of me right now. At first, they were like wondering, like, what is going on? But, <laughs> but eventually, my family was really supportive. You know, and even right now, they're all really proud of what I do. You know. History of Swag says, I made Queen Elizabeth in Minecraft from Rich LaRousse. I've heard of that. I've heard of that. Is that that's a username, right? Rich LaRousse? That's a person. I'm trying to remember it, but... <laughs> Ozzy says, did you turn coffee into a microphone to listen to, to call Clink? from Hogan's Heroes. I didn't watch Hogan's Heroes. Emma says, I'm on board Queen Mary 2. My new home, really happy. I was thinking, could Queen Mary 2 be requisitioned for war? You know, I th I think that if, if we were in like a major war and our countries were desperate enough to transport people, they might, yeah, they might requisition the Queen Mary 2 for that. So, but like I said, they'd have to be desperate enough for that. But I think it could happen. Hey, Brock, how's it going? Thank you, Ken. Fallon says, I like your channel because... I get to talk to people like me, and I'm part of your channel for life. Oh, thank you so much. Oliver says, do you prefer tea or coffee? Um, so it's funny. All my life I hated tea. I grew up as a coffee person. But, you know, as I transitioned from my 20s to my 30s, my stomach just doesn't sit well with coffee anymore. Like, it's not just my stomach, too. Like, I actually shake and get, like, heart palpitations after drinking coffee. So I can't drink co coffee anymore. So the whole reason why I switched to tea was because it has less caffeine. And so it still wakes me up. It still makes me alert. But it's not so, you know, like, overly caffeinated. So, um, so I would say now today, I prefer black teas more than I prefer coffee, which is weird for me to say. I would have asked me like five years ago, I would have said, no way would I ever be drinking tea. But here I am, you know, more proof to never say never, right? I always, <laughs> I always get people suggesting something. I'm like, that's okay. And then like, I end up doing it anyway. So, here I am, you know. Emma says, Q2 Duplex Hollywood Suite with my family. Awesome. Fun edit says, next year I'm going on a cruise on the Symphony of the Seas and I'm scared it will sink. I don't think it'll sink, but but I I, I will say that is a, a genuine caution to have in your mind. I think that, as history's proven, no ship is unsinkable. Ah, Pookie says, do you use your Cunard tea set when you aren't doing tea time? No. Um, so, I usually do have tea every day. Uh, not like this, 
but um, what I do is I all I do is I I I I make tea in a mug. So I have like a special like coffee mug, and I make tea in that. Um, but I don't use the the china every day because first of all, after I after I finish the tea, I have to clean up. So I wash all of this, and it would drive me absolutely bonkers to have to wash all of this every single day. And then when it comes to the snacks, I don't eat these every day. So <clears throat> these are like a treat for me, like the Scottish shortbread, the chocolate covered digestives, the sandwiches. These are for only when I do the tea time live streams. Otherwise, at most what I'll have is I might pull out maybe two of these digestives to have by myself when I'm just having tea by myself, but I don't have the whole, the whole thing. Um, this is just like, you know, special occasion, which I do twice a week. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, Fallon says, Alex, I want to, I want to be like you as a YouTuber when I grow up. Oh, well, hopefully you'll be better than me. So I always hope that, you know, that people will, uh, will surpass the people that they look up to, you know? Oliver says, do you prefer ships or trains? Ooh, that is a tough one. Ships or trains? You know, I've loved trains a lot longer than I've loved ocean liners. But if you were to ask me if I had to give up trains or give up the Queen Mary, what would it be? I'd say I'd rather give up trains. I'd rather have the Queen Mary. So I'm not really sure what that means. Uh, but I love trains so much. So it's it would be hard for me to choose. Keith says, Alex, you do you and ignore the noise. I lived my life by that mantra. That's a good idea. Yeah. Emma says, I am permanently living on board. Permanently living on board? My goodness. That's true. People have lived on uh, QE2 and, and on cruise ships as well. Uh, Empire of Waterloo. Yeah, the heat wave has calmed down. We're having normal, normal warm weather right now, so... Uh, I'm able to do this live stream with a jacket on, no less. <laughs> uh, Grace Rollins says, Hello, Alex. Did you know that they still could raise the Britannic? Uh, did I know that? No, I didn't know that. I don't imagine why they would, though. That's the thing. Like, I don't see why they would. Keith says, Love these tea time chats. Very relaxing with a sprinkle of charm. Oh, thanks. Alan says, I've seen a Navy destroyer before. Oh, nice. Where'd you see that at? I used to see them. Have I seen one? You know, I'll be honest. I don't I don't know the difference between a battleship, a destroyer, or yeah, anything like that. So I couldn't tell you what ships I, I've seen. I know I've had family who was in the Navy. I've been on some Navy Museum ships in my life, some of them from World War II, some of them from, you know, from the uh, Vietnam era. Um, I've been to an active uh, Navy base. I've seen one of their submarines in dry dock, which apparently, you know, like, it's, it's you know, it's not cool to take a picture of it. <laughs> They're not cool with that. Um, so yeah, that's, I've seen some pretty pretty interesting stuff. I'm not much into military, but I but as I told my friend uh, Chris, I maybe I maybe I'm not into military ships, but I would never turn down the opportunity to tour one. I think it's still fun.
swag. Um, twenty-five cents does sound a bit, a bit low. Empire says, "I think I prefer ships over trains because ships are so majestic." Yeah, but trains can be majestic. Fun edit says, "Hopefully the Queen Mary opens up." Even though I never went to it, I still support the Queen Mary. Oh, the Queen Mary will open up sometime this year. They're thinking October 1st. I just spoke um, to some family today. I said, hey, you know, the Queen Mary may open up October 1st. If, if that's so, I'm going down there. I told them, I said, so if it's opening, I'll let you guys know. You know, I said, I'll be down there. I'll meet up with, with you and stuff like that. I have more family that wants to see me, so um, I have to warn them as well. Not warn them, but but let them know. <laughs> yeah, warn them. Like, sorry, you guys, I'm coming down to visit you. <laughs> but uh, but I will have to let them know ahead of time, because there's some family that's been like, oh, when are you coming to see us, Alex, and stuff. So I'll let them know that if the Queen Mary for sure is opening October 1st, I'm gonna be there. So um, yeah. Uh, Glenn says, steam-powered cars would be interesting. Never seen it. I've heard of it. I've heard of... There There was a... They've made attempts to do steam-powered cars. There are steam-powered tractors um, that exist in the UK as well. That's kind of like a car. It's the same idea. Um, but there was one... I forget... Uh, I forget... Um, It was a British car, and it was like 1890-something. Yeah. See you later, Mike. Uh... Ken says, Alex, even though your channel doesn't really cover cars, would you consider doing maybe just a short one of steam-powered cars, like the Stanley Steamer? Oh, that's, that's the car I was just thinking of. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I could see myself doing a short video about the Stanley Steamer. I could see that happening. I mean, I wouldn't want to cover gas-powered cars, but the Stanley Steamer would be an interesting one. And it still kind of fits in with the theme of my channel, you know, steam, power, and, uh, and travel. Uh, Oliver says, need to go. Taking a ferry from Portsmouth to... to build... I don't know how to pronounce that. Bilbao? And it's 1 a.m. here in the UK. Been pleased joining the stream, though. Oh, thank you so much, Oliver. Have a good trip. Uh, Pookie says, have you toured the USS Midway in San Diego? Yes, in fact, I have. That was one of the ones I visited, was USS Midway. Hello, Ocean Liners. Um, let's see. Balances. Do you think they can raise the Lusitania? I mean, as as I say with most things on this channel, if you've got enough money, you can pretty much do anything. Do I think that anybody will? No, I don't think so. Um, it costs too much, and, and, and there wouldn't really be much of a reason to do it. Um, plus, Lusitania, I think, is is basically considered like, you know, a um, a burial site. So I don't think they would do it. Uh, Ozzy says, hey, Alex, would you meet your friend Chris, too? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, he certainly wants to be there for Queen Mary's reopening. <clears throat> if the Queen Mary reopens and uh, and she's uh, um, got her hotel rooms open as well, that's where I'll be staying. I'll try to book a room on the ship and stay there for a few days. And then I'll see if I can do like a, a public meetup with you guys on the ship. So I can like tell people like a month ahead of time or so, like, all right, this is what day you can meet me if you come to the Queen Mary and you pay for your your admission and stuff. And and then I can do something like that. So I'll, I'll see what I can do. <clears throat> uh, yeah. 
yeah, Jay Leno has has quite a collection of of cars. Um, Oceaner says, "If the Queen Mary went back into service, would you ever go on the voyage?" I think so. Yeah, I'd have to. I'd be worried about doing it. I'd be like worried that you know the ninety-year-old ship might sink. But I mean, <laughs> but I know I'd have to do it. Um, Alex says, ever done a video on SS United States? It holds the blue ribbon. I have not yet. Um, I've done a video that featured the SS United States, and that was the video about the about uh, the Queen Mary racing SS Normandy um, but I don't at the at the for the time being I don't see myself focusing on videos about uh, about the SS United States because I've got so many other videos lined up for like the next year um, and there's there it, they're videos I'm more interested in making but you know who knows maybe after that you know I'll eventually do a video about as the United States, but but for the time being, I don't see myself doing it. I also like to cover the ships that are usually less covered. You know, like there's there's ships like SS United States. Every every steam ocean liner channel covers that ship, and um, and so I just I want to I want to try to deliver lesser known stuff. Daniel says, if Titanic did not sink, would it still be scrapped like its sister Olympic? Oh, yeah, I definitely think so. Because if Titanic didn't sink, there really would have been nothing too memorable about it. It, there w it wouldn't have been as famous uh, as it is today. Um... <laughs> Ozzy says, make sure Chris don't wear white when eating chocolate chip cookies. I know, what was that? He was eating cookies... And then he was, or, or these these digestives, he was getting chocolate all over his fingers and wiping it on his white shirt. I'm like, what are you doing? Ken says, if they ever move Queen Mary to a dry dock, do you think they would let people ride it over? I don't think so. Because the whole reason why they'd move the Queen Mary to the dry dock is because she needs repairs. And I think that would be too much of a a risk um, to have them on. But I could see them riding it from the dry dock back to the permanent berth. I can see that happening. Um, but yeah. Emma says, how many troops did RMS Queen Mary transport during the entire duration of World War II? The exact number escapes me, but it's it's over 800,000. Oh, shoot. A, I'll have to get that after the stream. I dropped a piece of banana, and it's now on the floor. And it's covered in peanut butter, so that's going to be a nice little stain to get out of the floor. Um... Uh, what was I saying? It's over 800,000. So I know there's a lot of mixed reports. Some people say, oh, it was 310,000. No, in total, it was over 800. And the two ships combined did just about 1,500,000 troops. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, Queen Mary, over 800,000. But the exact number escapes me at the moment. So... Swag says, hey, Alex, what's your opinion on the stuff that's going on now? You need to be more specific. What, uh, what stuff? Fun Edit says, I made a Lego Titanic and it even breaks in half. Oh, wow. That probably would have been some crazy engineering you would have had to do.
Daniel says, what's your favorite wheel configuration in steam locomotives? Because mines are 460s. My favorite wheel arrangement on steam locomotives are 244Ts, also known as Forney style locomotives like this one. That's my favorite uh, wheel arrangement slash engine design is Forney style engines. And speaking of locomotive, either this Friday or Saturday, depending on how soon I can finish it, is the next history video. The next history video is about a particular train wreck um, that happened in France. So interesting little story. It'll be a short video. I think from how it's going so far, it looks like the video might be around six minutes long. So not very long, but interesting story. Um, ocean Liner says, if Cunard made a new Ocean Liner, what do you think they would name it? I was actually just having that conversation last night with my friend Chris. And last night? No, the night before. Um, and I was saying that if they wanted to give it a queen name that I believe that the only other queen name that they could give it that they haven't used already is Queen Alexandra, who was uh, the wife of King Edward VII. Yeah. Also the king that's known as Dirty Birdie. <laughs> uh, anyway, um... But yes, uh, so his wife was Queen Alexandra. So I can see them using Queen Alexandra. She's not as well known, so that's probably the reason why they haven't used her yet. Um, but if not, you know, we were talking about how they might use a name like Mauritania or Lusitania. Um, they don't generally name ships after ships that sank, though. So more likely be Mauritania. But... Um, but, you know, that's just all speculation. Um, Fallon says, I'm wondering how did the bow of HMS or HMHS Britannic snap? You know, I'm not well versed with the story. I did not know that the bow of of the Britannic snapped. I did not know that. Um, Daniel says, hold up, wasn't your old channel, Alex the Railroader? It was, yes. I don't use that channel anymore. I haven't used that channel in years. Like, literally years. I, I don't post anything on it. Fun edits. Oh, yeah, the fun edits. The answer is is always going to be ocean liners. I do not like cruise ships at all. Not at all. <laughs> ocean liners are the only passenger ships I like. And even then, I'm very specific about what ocean liners I like. Uh... Ocean Liner says, Was the Queen Mary rusting by the Great Depression? Um, yeah, yeah, uh, she was a, uh, if pretty much abandoned for two years, not like 100% abandoned, but work did not happen for almost two years on the ship um, during the Great Depression. So basically the, the hull started rusting, um, but they scraped all that rust off when they resumed work on the ship. the sugar. There we go. Um. 
Daniel says, if you wanted an extinct steam locomotive to return, what would it be? An extinct steam locomotive? I don't know of any locomotive that I personally like that you would call extinct. Um, so I couldn't answer that question because all the locomotives I do like are... There's an example still in existence somewhere, generally. So, I yeah, I don't have an answer to that. Emma says, there's a library aboard the Queen Mary 2. I found Titanic, Queen Mary, etc. books. Nice. Yeah, when I eventually travel aboard Queen Mary 2, I look forward to visiting the library. Um... Fallon says, have you heard of the RMS Ocean Oceanos? O Ocean Oceanaus? And Oce I've heard of Oceanic, but Oceanaus? No. Um, Ken says, would you consider doing a video on Casey Jones, the train engineer? It's quite the legend. I mean... I, I don't see myself doing that, but, you know, I'll never say never, you know, because maybe one day I might, but, but, uh, I don't know. I don't see myself doing it. Let's see. Tyler says Oceanos. I've never heard of Oceanos. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a fan of, of cruise ships. It's just not my style. You know, um, cruise ships are very much designed around entertainment. And a lot of the things they offer are not things that I actively seek you know, when I'm looking for time off. Um, so, like, yeah, I don't go to bars, I don't go to clubs, I don't go to places to dance. I don't often visit movie theaters. I have, I have seen live plays and musicals in the past. I'm not, you know, I, I don't generally do that, though. Um... So usually, like, and, and I certainly don't gamble. So a lot of the things that that um, cruise ships offer, it's not something that appeals to me. So I'm what I do with my time when I have time off is I visit historic places. That's what I do. <laughs> like, that's my idea of a fun time is to go somewhere old and to learn about it. Like, I, I, I don't know. I, I know I'm extremely like nerdy. But that's me, like, I, you know, that's my idea of a fun time. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so cruise ships don't offer anything I want. Um, and I don't often like the decoration that's on cruise ships. Uh, so, but the, but the difference here is that I would take a transatlantic crossing on the Queen Mary 2. Because what Cunard offers is what I'm looking for. They ha on a transatlantic crossing, they have people who do lectures on the history of ships. That's something I would attend. You know, um, they do afternoon tea, which is something I do quite often. Uh, they, they, they maintain a traditional atmosphere. So people who dress up and things, that's something I could see myself doing. Um, and then, like, you know, like Emma was saying, there's people go to the library on there. They sit there and relax and read a book. People don't usually do that on cruises. They don't usually like go to the library and read a book. And in fact, most cruise ships don't have a technical library. Most cruise ships, they have like a lounge that has books, but it's not a library. Um, so, 
Yeah, I, I, a, a Cunard transatlantic crossing aboard Queen Mary 2 is more in line with what I like. So, I could see myself doing that. Um... Oh, Chilling asks tea service questions. Which of the queens did it come from? Okay, so to answer your first question, which of the queens? It, it's a mix. So this all isn't from one ship, nor did I buy it all at once. I bought each piece individually, and it took me months and months to do it. You know, I, it was um, a bunch of, uh, like, early Christmas money and stuff like that that I received from family. I saved it all up, and then I just bought one piece at a time on eBay. Some of these pieces came with a label, like what ship it was from. Some of them were from Queen Mary. Some of them were from Queen Elizabeth. I think one piece in here somewhere specifically said, uh, specifically said Sylvania. Uh, but the but the rest of the pieces, there's there's no information as to exactly where it came from. Uh, but it is more likely that the bulk of the items are from either Queen Mary or Queen Elizabeth or both. Um, so, yeah, that's your first question. Is the pattern still available from the manufacturer? No. They haven't manufactured these since 1967. 1967 was the last time they manufactured it because 1967 is when the original Queen Mary was retired. That's when Cunard alerted the manufacturers at the time that they would be changing the style because in just two years they were going to bring out the QE2 for the first time. And they didn't want to have the traditional style on the QE2. They wanted to have something that looked a little bit more modern, something that fit better. And so, um, so yeah, the last designs were created in 1967. And in fact, Cunard d does not currently use the same manufacturer. So the manufacturer of all of these was Foley. F-O-L-E-Y. That's Foley. But the current manufacturer for Cunard uh, China today is Wedgwood. Wedgwood is a good manufacturer. So, you know, I, I think eventually I would like to get a few pieces that are from Queen Mary too. Um, but yeah, so they, the manufacturer doesn't make these anymore, uh, and the, neither the pattern either. So these are very rare. Um, let's see. Is the teapot, creamer, and sugar bowl rectangular to save space? Yes, essentially yes. So, you know, they, so like you said, teapot, creamer, sugar, there's also, this is called a waste dish. It looks like a sugar bowl, but it's, it's bigger. So waste dish is square as well as a hot water jug. This is the hot water jug. It's it's like the creamer, but it's bigger. And uh, it's it's also square. Um, and yes, it was designed so you could, you know, stack these items up, you know, like that on top of each other. They'll be close to each other. And you can put them on shelves and you can fit more of them on the shelves. It just makes it more efficient. Um, and then the round items, like the plates, they go on plate racks. The the cups, they go on cup racks. And so um, everything was designed to fit nice and neatly. But also it kind of fit with the Art Deco theme because some of these were manufactured in the 1930s. Not these specifically, but the, the items in question started being manufactured in the 1930s. And so in the 1930s, everybody was looking for the style of something to look different. And, you know, and, you know, the whole idea about Art Deco is it, it didn't look traditional. And so, uh, and so these square teapots certainly embodied the Art Deco ideals, which was to not conform to, to the classic image. And so that's why sometimes when you see these on eBay, they are labeled Art Deco. And it's kind of true, it's kind of not, but, but in, a way it, in a way it is. So um, that's what drew me to this set because I wasn't originally, when I was looking to buy a, tea, a, a, a China tea set, I originally wasn't going to buy 
stuff from Kinnard. Because I looked at it, I'm like, oh, it looks kind of bland. It's white with stripes. And I thought it's kind of bland. But as I was looking and looking and looking for other tea sets, I was like, none of this is my style. But then the, the more I learned about these, the more I kind of grew to like it. Um, you know, the, the, the stripes that are on it, there's a black stripe around the top edge of each item. And then through the center of each item is two amber colored stripes and one gray stripe. It's almost like a bluish gray. And from what I read on an article, it said that um, that it the the bluish gray stripe was supposed to represent uh, the ocean, and then the two amber colored stripes are are supposed to represent the sunset. So the idea is it's it represents the sunset over the waters of the gray North Atlantic. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. And so that's kind of what led to my final decision to collect this. Because in the end, it was so different and so weird. And I'm like, that's me. <laughs> I'm like, that's me. So yeah, I hope that answers your questions. Um, I lost your... Oh, there it is, yeah. Uh... Daniel says, any standard gauge steam locomotives you like? Um, yeah, yeah. So I like, uh, I like 440s. I like uh, early moguls. Porters. Standard gauge fournies. Those do exist. They used to run them for the New York, New York Central, I think it was called. Um, things like that. I When it comes to all steam, I prefer stuff built before the year 1900. So uh, I'll rarely say that I'm interested in an engine after the, the year 1900. Um, Emma, it sounds like you're having a fun time. Uh, wow says, hey, Alex, what's your favorite German ship? It is the Kronprinz Wilhelm. History of Swag says, hey, Alex, would you do a report update for July with the Queen Mary? Yes. So there, um, there is one coming. Uh, we're still gathering information. But now that I work for QMI Restore the Queen... The updates will have to be on the QMI YouTube channel, which currently there's no content on that channel. Um, but I will be in charge of making the content on that channel. So, um, so the Queen Mary updates, they will go on the QMI channel. And when I do make the update video, it'll get posted on QMI's channel. And I'll make a little video that explains to go to that channel. So that's what I'll do. Uh, Emma says, I want to see the bridge. I haven't got around to asking for permission yet. I believe there is a passageway behind Queen Mary 2's bridge. So it's enclosed by glass and you can walk in there and actually see the bridge without disturbing the officers. So I would ask about that. I would talk to somebody on the ship, like a steward or somebody, because I saw on a video just last night that there is a glass partition, so it's not in the bridge, it's just behind it. And you can walk through there without disturbing the officers. So yeah, ask about that. Um, Fun edit says, why did funnel designs of ocean liners change like Queen Mary 2 and QE2? Um, like, the same reason for most things. Um, most of the time what it is is that companies are always trying to stay modern. So they're always looking for ways to move away from traditionalism. And so, um, you know, around the 1960s, Cunard and a bunch of other steamship companies 
were looking to make their ships look different than these old-fashioned ships. So one of the first things to change was the shape of the funnel. But also, um, you know, the funnel shape was also based on what they needed for exhaust. So, um, you know, so QE2, she was originally designed to have only four boilers. She only They only installed three, but she was originally designed to have four boilers. She didn't need multiple, you know, funnels, and her funnels didn't need to be massive because she didn't put out a lot of smoke. You know, the, the boilers ran very clean for what they were, so there wouldn't be a huge need to pump out massive amounts of exhaust. So the, so the funnel is designed really thin and they call it pencil like. Um, so that's part of what goes into designing a ocean liners funnel. Um, Fallon says, would you like to have something from the Titanic grave site underwater? Personally? N n no. No, I don't think so. Um, yeah, I, I think the closest thing I ever got to buying a souvenir from that was like they sell these little bits of coal, and I almost bought one because they're 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 relatively cheap, you know. So I almost bought one, but uh, I think if anything, it'd be kind of cool to own like a little teacup. Mm. or a rivet but generally speaking no I I haven't actually looked for uh, Titanic artifacts because it doesn't uh, it doesn't sit well with me for some reason I'd rather to see it in a museum it doesn't sit well with me to own it personally Justin, I don't I, I don't collect period uh, postcards, maritime postcards, but I do own a few. <laughs> so I only bought them because I like the ship that's on them. So I have one that is, it's actually kind of funny. So I have one that I really prize. Why don't I show it to you guys? There's enough of you still watching. I'll show you guys. It's really, really cool. Be right back. So it's in a protective it's in a protective case and I would not want to touch it with my bare hands even if my hands were clean um, so it's in a plastic slip so it is of RMS Mauritania the original but let me explain I'll show you first and I'll explain it a little bit sorry there's there's a glare on the camera so All right, so to explain it a little bit, it's RMS Mauritania. However, because it, it says on the bottom, RMS Mauritania. But you will notice, for those of you who are major fans, it does not look like Mauritania. <laughs> I'll show you again one more time. It looks more like Lusitania. And that's because it is. So... The way that they made this is it's a black and white photograph of Lusitania. And what they did was they used a, a, a type of silk screening process. So imagine the, kind of the same way that you might make a t-shirt in your garage and sell those on the street or something. 
it's the same idea. It's a silk screen, and that's how they painted it with colors. So it's a photograph that was painted on a silk screen. Um, and at the time, Mauritania was not complete. So um, either that or... No, no, scratch that. I think what it was was that they had is, is that the two ships looked really similar so they thought nobody would notice if they just used a picture of lusitania and then sold it and called it mauritania for the for the souvenir i think that's what really happened <clears throat> but uh yeah so the thing is that the reason why i wouldn't want to touch this even if i had clean hands is because back then the kinds of paints that they used for stuff like this included um chemicals like arsenic and lead so I wouldn't want to touch this with my bare hands simply for the fact that I don't want my hands covered in any kind of particles of, of, uh, of lead or arsenic. But what's really cool about this, um, and I was really lucky because it was cheap. The postcard, I'll read it off to you. The postcard dates back to March 20th of 1911. March 20th. 1911 and it was posted at 10 p.m uh the message is if i remember correctly it's half english half polish so because it's a mix of the two i've never been able to accurately translate it i'd show it to you guys but it, you'll see it's it's written in cursive and so it's really hard to, ah, where is it? It's really hard to read. Um, so I have tried to, to translate it. I've, but because it's both Polish and English, like it says, Dear Arthur, Kofiao or Kofiao, Kofiao, I, yes, I can't print, yeah. Oh, See, it looks like a Y followed by a Z. And I've tried individually translating the words. But the problem with the, with it is, see, and people who speak um, whatever language, I think it's Polish. People who speak that language might be able to tell you, you need to combine the words to understand the message. So if you try to individually um, translate it, it doesn't make sense. And that's what I did. I individually translated each word and, and I combined the words to read a message and it didn't make sense. It was completely, it didn't make sense. You have to come, you have to translate it as a combination, you know? So it's, it's half English, half Polish. I have no idea what it says. Um, but it's addressed to Mr. Arthur Roberts of Utica, New York. Yeah. And what's really cool is the stamp on it is the newly crowned King George V. So, so yeah, the stamp in the corner is the newly crowned King George V. It's a one penny stamp as well. One penny so this is one of my most prized possessions. It didn't cost a lot. I think, I think I got this for $11. I'm not even kidding, you guys. I got it for $11. <clears throat> so it's not like I spent a fortune on it. So really neat. And I'll set that aside so I don't, I don't mess it up. But, um. Ken says, have you ever owned a Lionel train set? No, I haven't. Because, and I'll be honest, I like model trains, but I don't see Lionels as model trains. I see them more as toys. So um, I have a friend who collects Lionel trains, huge collection, and he runs them, he fixes them up and restores them. And so he buys them non-functional and then he restores them. And it's great, but it's most certainly a toy set. <clears throat> but these are, like, I'm obsessed with the realistic-looking model versions. Uh, Chilling says, is the silverware from Cunard? 
No, so um, all I have here in terms of silverware is just demi toss spoons, and these are these are just cheap demi toss spoons I bought off of uh, Amazon. But they're they're nice. They fit the size, um, and they look like something that might have been used on Kinnard. Cause I know because I looked. I went online, looked for actual Kinnard demi toss spoons and stuff. And these look somewhat similar to the ones that were uh, used on Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth. Um, but they are brand new um, demi-toss spoons. And then the tea infusers are also brand new. Bought them off Amazon. <clears throat> I bought these more for utility rather than looks. And that's because I knew that, I'd be, that I would occasionally be brewing big pots of tea when I have friends. So... I needed to have tea infusers that were rather large that could hold a lot of tea if I needed to. Um, Daniel says, why are there no White Star ships left? Because White Star Line was merged with Kinnard. Kinnard had the, the, uh, a larger amount of assets than White Star did, so Kinnard became the, the majority owner of the Kinnard White Star Line company. And eventually, White Star Line was, was kind of absorbed by Kinnard until now it's just Kinnard company um and because they're the Kinnard brand they don't build white star ships they don't keep white star ships uh you know um in good order but I will say that there is still one white star line ship that still exists and it is the SS Nomadic which is in Belfast Northern Ireland so actually, they yeah, so they still have a White Star Line ship. And that's where you can see it. I hope that when I do take my trip to the UK, which if you guys want to support that, the links are in the description below. Um, but eventually when I do take my trip to the UK, I want to stop in Belfast to see the Titanic Museum, see SS Nomadic, film SS Nomadic, and make a video about it and all that stuff. Um, see the Titanic uh, dry dock. Um, and see if a few other, like, um, things in that general vicinity. So, um, uh, Evan says, I want to see the bridge wings fixed on the original Queen Mary. I do too. That would be a really cool project for QMI to work on. Um... Or to fundraise, I should say, to fundraise. Emma says, I, I have still yet to find Homer Simpson on the wall. Really? Oh my goodness. Uh, <clears throat> Air says, is Ghosts and Legends still open on Queen Mary? Well, the, the Queen Mary is not currently open. She'll likely open after October 1st. But I do imagine that when she does open, Ghosts and Legends will return. Because of the fact that it was so popular. Ozzy says, Alex, read on the Queen Mary history. I thought there was a price on to try to sink during World War II. Yes, there is. I have three videos about the Queen Mary during World War II. I think you'll really like them. Um, the first one is... Um, I changed the name a few times over the months, but what is it called currently? It's called... Um, Oh, jeez. I forget, but it's on my homepage. If you go to my channel's homepage, um, you'll see that it, the, the, the thumbnail of the first video, because it's a three-part series, the thumbnail of the first video says, um, Grit, uh, Britain's greatest weapon. And it shows a picture of the Queen Mary, and it shows a picture of a soldier with a, a bayonet, and, a, and then another soldier with, like, a, a handgun. Um... But yeah, that's the first of a three-part series. You'll really love it. I explain it in detail in there, but to kind of briefly touch upon it, um, the Queen Mary had a bounty placed over her, and also Queen Elizabeth as well. The bounty was placed by Hitler. The bounty was for the equivalent of one million Reichsmarks, plus the Iron Cross with oak leaves for any, um, any Axis Force submarine captain who could sink either of the ships so it's one million reichsmarks at the time that was equivalent to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars 
So, um, yeah. Yeah. Just double checking things on my head. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah. Uh, Emma says, is the Homer Simpson on the artwork somewhere? Yes, there's each panel represents something different, but there's one whole panel that represents the United States. And it's and Homer Simpson is on that panel towards the bottom center, like in the vicinity of the bottom center of the panel. So I think if you were standing next to it, it would be kind of waist high level. Um, so that's where Homer Simpson is. Uh, oh, see? Oh, geez. I didn't see that you said don't spoil it. Well, then why'd you ask? You asked, is it on the artwork somewhere? Oh my gosh. I wouldn't have spoiled it if I, if I knew you didn't want me to answer your question. Um... John says Utica, New York, for the for the um, postcard. Oh, okay. I've I've never seen that that place in New York before, so I've never pronounced the name before. It's pronounced Utica or Utica. Utica? I've never pronounced it. Wow asks, Hey Alex, what if you could go back in time? and go on any ocean liner, what ship would it be? No Cunard ships. So not a Cunard ship, and I had to choose one. Any ocean liner, back in time. It would either be... SS France from 1910, I believe. I remember the the, the the year correctly, 1910 SS France. Or I would choose Olympic. Um, one of those two. I'd be more likely to sail on SS France than Olympic, but still, Olympic would be fun. Uh, so that's what I would say. Captain Foxy. Awesome. I don't play Roblox, but that's pretty cool. Jacqueline says, Alex, what's your favorite British warship? I don't have any. I'm not a warship person. I don't know anything about them. I don't study them. Uh, so, yeah, I couldn't answer that. But um, Fallon asks, Alex, is Queen Mary bigger than Titanic, Britannic, and Olympic? And the Queen Mary's history vids are amazing. Yes, Queen Mary is definitely bigger than the Olympic class ships. Um, Queen Mary is 137 feet longer than Titanic. And um, let's see, how many feet wider? 8 plus 18. 26 feet wider than Titanic. Titanic had 9 decks, Queen Mary has 12 decks. Um, and Titanic was something along the lines of 44, 45,000 gross register tons, whereas Queen Mary was 80,000 gross register tons. So Queen Mary was almost twice in, in size than Titanic when it comes to gross, re gross register tons. So Queen Mary is significantly larger than Titanic, um, which is pretty, pretty cool in my opinion. Um, Justin says, what's the weirdest, most unique stat about Queen Mary? Weirdest, most unique. Oh gosh, what would it be? There's a, there's, there are some. I 
See, now that I've got the spotlight on me, I can't think of anything. Um... I can't think of anything. Now, you know, the spotlight's on me, I can't think of anything. But there are some weird, unique things about the Queen Mary that I can't think of at the moment. I don't know. I don't know. Or Queen Elizabeth. I don't know. Weird or unique. It's not coming to my head. I'm drawing a complete blank right now. Chilling says, while in the UK, will you also visit Queen Mary's construction site? Um, so, no. I, unfortunately, as you can imagine, the trip to the UK will be exorbitantly expensive. I mean really, really expensive. And there's a lot of things to see and do. And so to save on time, so I'm not spending all my time rushing around on trains and cars and planes, we have come up with a basic travel plan. So we are visiting only cities that have the maximum amount of history that I can pull out of it without doing too much traveling. So, for instance, London. There's a lot of history there. But also, um, Bristol. Bristol has a lot of history, and um, there's a lot of things for us to do there. You know, we're also going to Belfast. Lots of things to do there. Um, you know, so Southampton, there's a few things to do, but we'll be in Southampton because of the Queen Mary stops there. Um, we are considering maybe traveling to one more destination in the UK besides, you know, London, Southampton, Bristol, and, uh, and Belfast. We might, we might go to see, see, we're talking about this. We might go to see, um the Royal Yacht Britannia. Um, I am a huge fan of uh, of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Um, and the Britannia is a very interesting ship. Uh, very, very interesting. It's got a lot of history. Um, so that might be another place I might visit. But that really depends because the Britannia isn't near enough things. There's still some things to see and do, but this trip is not a vacation, so to speak. This trip is about filming things for the channel. So it's the whole reason why I'm going is not for fun. It's to go to film things so I can make videos for you guys. And so we're planning this whole trip around me being able to, to film all these different places and things. I want to film... <laughs> dozens upon dozens, maybe even a couple hundred things, if I can cram it into all the SD cards I'll be, I'll be bringing with me. Um, so, but I've had to be really careful how I plan it. Like, I've had people that are like, oh, you should go to Newcastle upon Tyne and see the, the Turbinia, and I'm like, that would be awesome, but there's not enough things for me to do in Newcastle upon Tyne, so if I go there, it would be like I'm traveling all the way over there for for one thing, and that's not a good enough plan. You know, we, we will be limited on time because what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the Queen Mary 2 drop us off in Southampton. The Queen Mary will go across the Atlantic for a week. It'll come back the second week. So we have, um, I think I counted 12 days, not 14, but 12 days from when it drops us off to when it'll come back to pick us up. So uh, so we will be very limited. And we already have a plan to visit Paris. So, um, because there's lots of history in Paris. And my friend is coming with me because uh, my friend, he's been to the UK and to, and to France before. He knows his way around. You know, he'll he knows all the good deals and everything. And for his channel, he needs to film Disneyland Paris because that's what his channel does. So that's how he makes his money. He needs to go to film Disneyland Paris. So 
I need to make sure that I'm giving him enough time to do what he needs to do instead of just using up all the time for myself. So, um, so it, it has been very difficult because a lot of people have been like, oh, you got to see this, you got to see that. And I'm like, there's no time to see everything. I have to, to choose a very specific thing. But, um, but yes, if you guys would like to support that in order to see those videos, like I'd like to go as soon as possible. I, I have to save, I, you know, so I have a little bit of money saved up and then I have a um, GoFundMe for people who want to invest in that. So that way they can get to see that stuff sooner. Um, so I have a GoFundMe, there's information, the breakdown of the costs and everything is on there. As well as I have a link in the description below to the video uh, that describes the plan. So, um, so if you want to learn more about that and you think it might be something you'd want to, you know, donate towards to support the channel, then that's, that's an option for you. Um, so I have the link to the video in the description below, as well as a link to the GoFundMe, which also explains everything in text. Um, so yeah, but that's something I'm looking forward to. And I'm also saving up my own money towards that as well. Um, but at the moment it, it is kind of slow going. I'll admit that. Um, hmm. let's see. Grimtune says, what was the most expensive room for booking on Queen Mary? Um, oh gosh. Back then it didn't have a name. Oh, it's on my computer somewhere. Uh, it's on the starboard side. I want to say main deck. Yes, it had to be main deck. That's where the grand suites were. So main deck, starboard side, just aft of the, um, the midship first class stairwell and it was a huge suite i want to say four rooms four four separate rooms made up the suite and today it's like i don't remember what they call it today i don't even remember the room numbers it's on my computer and i could easily look it up but the computer is like over there and i have to like look it up i feel like i need to sneeze <coughs> oh, weird. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah, so I, I don't remember the room numbers or what they call it today, but it's like a series of four rooms. Starboard side, just aft of the mid, midship first class stairwell on main deck. So if you have deck plans, you can look that up. Um... But, uh, what was the question? Most expensive. I don't know the price. That's the thing. I don't know the price of it. Because the price has always changed. It really depended on the season, um, how many passengers there were, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So, Daniel says, what do you think of Bachman trains? Is it trash or is it okay for beginners? It's okay for beginners. That's what Bachman trains really are, is they're trains for beginners. Um, Jacqueline asks if I've read about the RMS Britannia from 1840. Um, I've briefly read about it, but nothing too, too deep in the history of it. Um... Fallon says, what are your top six favorite ocean liners? Three Cunard, three White Star Line. Oh, gosh. Queen Mary, Queen Elizabeth, RMS Mauritania, and then White Star, Oceanic 2, Oceanic 2, Olympic Titanic. Uh, Fallon says, Alex, you're going to Liverpool. That's one of those maybe places. So remember how I said a lot of people have been saying, go to here, go there, go here, go there. Liverpool is a maybe because they do have a really good maritime museum. But my friend and I, we've done some research. We're not sure what else there is to do in Liverpool that pertains to the history of my channel. 
Um, it has to be something that I can make videos out of, and it's got to pertain to the channel. So there is a, a, there's a railroad museum there somewhere. I tried looking for it. It seems really small. I'm not sure I found the right one. Uh, so we're still looking into it, but it, I mean, if someone, if someone really wants me to go to Liverpool, what I need you to do is help me to like create a list or something of all these like really amazing historic things that will be really good for the channel and then I'll consider it. But so far I've only seen two things that really, really, really pertain to the channel and that's their railroad museum and their maritime museum. Uh, but even then I, I don't feel that it's enough to warrant a, a trip to Liverpool it com in comparison to like Belfast, for instance. Um, Hey, Professor. Good morning to you. Uh, I don't know if I'm visiting York. I don't think it's anywhere near where we have planned. But that's just off the top of my head. Uh, see you later, Ocean Liners. Justin, yeah, the 16,683 souls that Queen Mary carried on a single voyage. Yeah, it's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Uh, Kit asks, what's your favorite part of a 1910s ocean liner, like Olympic and Titanic? What's my favorite part? Well, when it comes to those 1910 ocean liners, their Edwardian style is what's really fascinating. I'm a, I'm a very big architecture fan. Most of the architecture I like is from the Victorian Edwardian Art Deco ages. So I really do like that stuff. Um, so when it comes to ocean liners, I do like their Edwardian look. Um, from ships like that. If you're asking about specific rooms and things, quite often the dining rooms were very, very ornate and beautiful. Also, the staircases and stuff like that could be pretty nice. So yeah, I would have to say that. Matthew says, love the train in the background. Can we have a peek, please? I would have to, like, move everything. Like, I know you can't see it, but I have, like, a whole, like, studio set up. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got, like, lights and things all set up and wires strewn about all over. Like, there's, like, like two 15-foot wires that are going from my computer to the camera, and it's just... It's a lot. It's it's a lot. But I have a video on this, um, so if you've never seen it, um, it's... It's, um... What was it called? Uh... I think it's called, like, My Model Railroad Hobby or something like that posted it just like a couple weeks ago so it's on my channel and it has close-up views of the trains running on it as well so um and then i'll i'll make videos in the future like high quality 4k videos showing me operating the trains and stuff i'll do that in the future i have heard of sierra railway um number three um, History of Swag says, Alex, what's your favorite thing about Queen Mary? Do you mean something physical or something, like, um, figurative about it? Like, like, my favorite thing about Queen Mary is her history. Um, she's got an amazing history. Very storied, very multifaceted. Um, another favorite thing I like is her Art Deco style. Um... I love Art Deco, but I do have my favorites of the styles, and <clears throat> the particular Art Deco style that's on Queen Mary is a, a uh, early 1930s design that's British, so British early 1930s Art Deco design, and that's a particular design I favor, <clears throat> so that's another thing. Has he ever read about Saxonia? 
I've never read about it, but I have heard some, like, very few things about it. Um, another one of those ships I'll have to wait to research. Um... Yeah. Um, <clears throat> tangent. Uh, the the person who's sometimes watching my video. Tangent. If you're watching, I am going through this whole um live chat. Tangent has said that I ignore his his. I don't know if it's a his or her. Tangent says I ignore tangents comments on these live streams. I, I haven't seen any. So Tangent, if you're watching or you're watching in the future, I'm looking. I don't see your comments on here. I'm not ignoring you. I just don't see any. I, I'm, I've been waiting to see a comment from you. Um, but going back to the other folks who are talking. Uh, Grim Tunes, if you're building a model, I mean, it depends on, it really depends on your expertise level. Like, if I'm missing a part, I'll just make the part myself. You know, I have the tools, I have the, I have the, um, the materials to fashion it myself. I have all kinds of files and knives and things I can fashion the part myself. Um, but I don't know your skill level, so I can't really tell you what to do. Um... Uh, Matthew Conway says uh, if he could have preserved any ship it would have been Aquitania nice hello element uh, awesome professor Wow says, what's your favorite ship from the big four? I'm so new to ocean liners, I don't I don't know the names of the individual big four ships. Um, I don't even know much about what was on them, what's inside of them. I can't even picture them in my head. I know that there was a big four, but I I, I couldn't tell you anything about them. I'm so new to ocean liners that I, I don't I don't know. Um Oh boy, I'm losing track of the comments. Um, I don't know much about what Oceanic Three would have been like. A lot of people ask me that same question: um, what it would have, what things would have been like if it was fully built out, and I couldn't tell you. I, I don't know enough about it. All I saw was concept art that a fan made but it wasn't real concept art from the original ship so i i don't even know yeah i don't even know Fallon says, can you please do a video on Sunken Ship? I did. I did RMS Lanconia. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not Lanconia. RMS Lancastria. I did RMS Lancastria um, just the other day, so I have a video about that. Um... Thank you, Blue Collar. Kit says the big four ships are um, Celtic, Baltic, Cedic, and and Adriatic. Oh, okay. I don't. I can't picture them in my head, so I couldn't tell you. Like I know. I literally know nothing about them. I will just admit that to you guys right now. I'm not like I haven't been an Ocean Liner fan my whole life. I'm still relatively new. I've been an Ocean Liner fan since 2020. Um, so, the videos I've made about certain ships, 
are the only ships I know about. Like, 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 no, know about. You know what I'm saying? So, I've heard of names of ships. I can't always picture them in my head. I don't know their histories, unless I've made a video about them. Then I don't. Then I don't know anything about them. So, I just want to let you guys know right now because I know a lot of people are asking, "What about this ship? What about that ship?" What? And I'm like, I. You guys know way more than I do about most of these other ships. Um, I started off, you know, with trains, Disneyland, and a few other, you know, architecture, you know, San Francisco history. Oceaners are my, my newest venture, so I don't know anything about them, really. Um... Daniel says, my, uh, Talilin... Railway is an narrow gauge railway in the UK. If it's anywhere near where I'm visiting, then I'll try. But I can't go out of the way to visit something that's really far away. Um, because I literally don't have the time. Uh, every minute that we spend is... You know, as you can, as you can imagine, the trip is going to be so, so expensive that I don't want to lose, you know, any time on stuff. So if it's something I have to literally drive... 30 minutes away to see, it's probably not going to be likely. If it's something I have to take a train two hours to go and see just for one thing, it's not going to be likely. So um, it has to be something that's near the biggest cities, um, nearby, fast to get to, that kind of thing. We're not going to have a car. Like, we're not going to rent a car. We're going to be there on foot in these various cities and only take, like you know, um, public transit and stuff when we absolutely positively need to. So we won't be able to just rent a car and drive anywhere we want. Um, swag. Unfortunately, I do not have a way for people to mail stuff to me yet. Um, probably, maybe, possibly... By the end of the year, I will have a P.O. box or something that people can send stuff to. But that's a probably, maybe, possibly. So I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't uh, put too much into it. Um... Uh, Fallon, I, I, uh, your question about what ship would I like to sink, I don't like to talk about that. It's not... Uh... I know you're saying if there was nobody on it, but I'm, I'm not a, f you know, I don't know where that's coming from. It sounds like a, like a question a Titanic person might ask, but I, I don't, um, I, I take sinkings very seriously. I don't like to talk about them like it's, like it's a fun thing because a lot of people have died from sinkings and it's one of my worst fears. One of my worst fears is being on a ship at sea and it's sinking from under me. So I, I, I try not to talk about it like it's a fun topic. Um, um, thank you, Ma uh, Matthew. Good afternoon, traveling suitcase. Matthew says, I live in Georgia, USA, and we have many trains worth visiting, like Hiawassee, he 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 for example. Okay. Um... Uh, Carl, to answer your question, I've never heard of a story of Queen Mary breaking down at sea. Um, there was a story of Queen Elizabeth breaking down at sea while she was being transported from Florida to Hong Kong. But I've never heard of Queen Mary breaking down at sea. Uh, Kit, uh... My favorite German ship is Crown Prince Wilhelm. Or it's Wilhelm. I don't know how to pronounce I'm so bad at pronunciation. Crown Prince Wilhelm, I think it is, is my favorite. Uh, 
Justin says, would you ever have a panel discussion with other liner fans and or such a thing with QMI? A panel discussion? That just really depends. I mean, I'm so busy all the time. I barely even have time to do anything I want to do. Um, so I don't know. Plus, I, I would pretty much be like the one person there that knows very little compared to everybody else. It would be weird. I feel like the third wheel on my own channel, you know? Um. Fallon says, Alex, what ship would you like a movie of? Queen Mary or Queen Elizabeth? Queen Mary. Tangent's here. Hey, Tangent. Uh, let's see, I have a question for you about Queen Mary. Has the Queen Mary ever been in the Pacific Ocean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, she... Yeah, she she's in the Pacific Ocean right now. <laughs> uh, she sailed to Long Beach from uh, from Southampton. So she sailed across the Atlantic, went down around South America. So she had to go down Cape Horn, come back all the way up along the Pacific. So she traveled on the Pacific from Cape Horn all the way up to Long Beach on her own power. So yeah, she has sailed in the Pacific and she's technically currently sitting in the Pacific right now. Um, funded it says, how many movies has the Queen Mary been in? Oh, oh, I could not count that. There's been so many. Just so many. I could not. I don't know. It's It's been a lot. Evans says, hope to see you on Queen Mary, Alex. Me too. Um, I, hopefully when I, if I do get to go there... You know, when the ship reopens, I'd like to set up something where I can kind of meet people and, um, you know, say hi and we'll hang out for a short while and that kind of thing. So that'd be really fun. Um, we'll see what I, I have time for. Um... It's a tough comment to keep, Emma, but I, I can't, uh, it's not a bad comment, so I can't do anything. Um, swag. Swag says, hey, Alex, is it normal for you to get annoyed from people only knowing you for Titanic? Because I feel that same... Well, I mean, I've never made a specific video about Titanic, so I don't think anybody has ever known me for talking about Titanic. Um, I don't get annoyed from it. Uh, but I will admit, a lot of people ask me a lot of Titanic-related questions. And I think, it's not that I get annoyed being asked, it's that I get annoyed that my answers are usually always the same. It's always me saying I don't know. And part of the reason why I don't know is because Titanic is one of those subjects where... You know how you know that old saying, there's always a bigger fish? Well, it's kind of like that when it comes to Titanic. There's always going to be somebody that knows way more than I do about it, no matter how much I learn. And every time I've opened my mouth about Titanic, someone comes in, they swoop in, they're like, that's wrong. And <laughs> and so it's, I, I, that's what I get tired of. I get tired of just being so wrong about Titanic all the time. And so I'm always learning stuff about Titanic. I never stop. I, I, I love watching videos about learning things about Titanic and stuff like that. Um, but... Every time I talk about Titanic, someone comes in, they're like, well, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. And I've just learned to keep my mouth shut. So, because um, ti Titanic is one of those subjects where everybody's researched it. And so there's always someone who knows way more about it than the, than the person that talks. And so it's just one of those things where I, I've learned not to talk about Titanic at all, at all. Um, so, but do I get annoyed that people ask? No, I, I get annoyed that my answers are always the same. My answers are always, I don't know. <laughs> so, um, 
that doesn't that hasn't stopped me from learning about Titanic. It's just stopped me from speaking about Titanic. So that's why I don't really cover Titanic on my channel. I've made a few videos where I've compared Queen Mary to Titanic, um, not as a competition, but just as like showing people the similarities and the differences. Um, but other than that, I've never made a video specifically talking about Titanic, and I've done that for a reason. And so another one of those, you know, there's a few videos like that. Like, I don't make videos specifically talking about the history of Normandy or the history of SS United States. Like, I try to stick to the ships that aren't covered as often. Um, and when it comes to the ships, m most of my knowledge is about Queen Mary. Um, so, yeah. I've learned a lot about Queen Mary, and I'm still learning so much about it. Um, but th these are the first beginning stages of me branching away from Queen Mary and learning about other ships. So I'm still in that. I'm still in that. Uh, that um, that thing. That um, yeah. Matthew says, "Any news on Kielmeyer's Sword of the Queen lately?" There is. We're we're currently. I'm preparing to make an update video. Um, but it, it'll it'll be a little bit longer because we have to wait till July. Um, I have a feeling there's going to be more information at the beginning of July. So I, I always have this habit of I make a video and then like the next day, a ton of information is released. And then I'm like, ugh, because I have to wait another month or so before I can even compile that information into a long enough video. So... Um, like, that always happens. Like, I post an uh, update, and then, like, the next day, there's, like, a huge release of information that's different. So, um... Tangent says, The Queen Mary has been in that crappy Titanic 2 movie. Yeah, that's true. Um, Daniel says, How do you feel about bootleg Titanic movies filmed on Queen Mary? Um, the same as I feel about all bootleg movies. You know, like, I... I don't watch that. I don't watch that many movies to begin with. Uh, I'm, yeah, I, I'm very, very selective about what I watch. So, I would never watch a movie that I know is not going to be good. You know, like there's some people I know that they will watch bad movies just for the fun of watching a bad movie. I don't do that. I, I'm usually so busy. I don't even have, I, I don't want to devote my time to something I know I'm not going to enjoy. So that's usually how I am. You know, like, it's crazy. You know, like, <laughs> I'm just, I'm too, I guess the real answer is I'm just too busy to, to spend time on something I know I'm not going to like, you know? Um... Jacqueline says, if people have a Titanic question, they should ask Historic Travels. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Historic Travels, you know, Sam knows a lot about Titanic. I highly encourage anybody watching um, that uh, if you want to ask a Titanic question, ask Sam from Historic Travels. He certainly knows way more about Titanic than I do. Like, and it's funny. Someone said, Alex is like the Historic Travels of Queen Mary. And I'm like, that's kind of true. Like, Sam from Historic Travels, he delves into, like, all the details of Titanic. My channel, I delve into all the details about Queen Mary. So, it's kind of, it's kind of funny. We're, you know, we're, we're, we have, we're similar in that way. So, yeah, anybody who has a question about Titanic, you should ask Historic Travels. Um... All right. Oh, thanks, Justin. All right, folks. That's going to do it for this live stream today. What's Today is Wednesday. So I'm hoping on Friday or Saturday, one of those two, depending on the time, I will have a video uh, about a very famous train wreck. It's a history video. Um like a mini documentary, maybe about six or seven minutes long. So either Friday or Saturday, that'll come out. Um, 
Sunday is the next tea time, so look out for that. And at the start of next month, uh, I will be preparing a history video about Pirates of the Caribbean at Disneyland. I know for some of you new folks, you're like, w w where'd that come from? Well, my channel used to be all about Disneyland. I'm still a little bit of a fan of the, of the traditional park, so on occasion, I do make videos about the history of the various rides at the park. So even if you're here for trains and ocean liners, you might be pleasantly surprised about how entertaining the documentaries about Disneyland can be. So beginning of July is when I'll start working on a history of Pirates of the Caribbean and have that out for you sometime in the beginning of July uh, because that's when the attraction will reopen from its most recent refurbishment and there might be some new changes to it. And so it'll be a great time to put together a history video on that. So be prepared for that, you guys. I want to thank you all so much for watching uh, my videos. Love you all, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. Oh, and sometime in July will be my history video about the H4 Hercules, also known as the Spruce Goose. So stay tuned for that in late July. Anyway, thank you, folks. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.